Episode 8, Tell the World, is the first episode where the cold open is the beginning of the actual story instead of just a recap or sneak peek. We find that an online event called, you guessed it, Tell the World, is being announced. The idea is for people around the world to send in their photos or videos of whatever they want so that they can be displayed for all to see. The mean girls want to show off fashion, and the nerdy boys want to make a film about a bug monster, but I isn't quite sure what she wants to tell the world. After the title sequence, I is at home, still trying to figure something out, when Pleakley announces that dinner is ready. I thinks that maybe she should do a, quote, foodie blog, and proceeds to take pictures of the dinner table. Unfortunately, Stitch's antics make a mess of things, ruining the photo shoot. I's disappointment doesn't last long, however, as a news bulletin inspires her to record the town. I, Pleakley, and Stitch go into town to begin shooting a video, and, uh... Sure, just add more random nonsensical abilities to Stitch. Why not? In the meantime, Jumba is back at it with his experiments, this time aiming to create the Nyan, a mythological creature known for attacking children. Jumba acknowledges the malevolent nature of the being, but goes ahead anyway, even though he's living with a child. I guess he's so excited about science, he forgot to use common sense. The Nyan is born and immediately goes on a rampage, whereupon Jumba finally realizes he's done something bad. Too little too late, buddy. Back in town, there's some wonky pseudo-3D animation going on as I and Pee record the tea shop where JJ works. After a tea juggling montage and some schoolboy antics, the group continues through town as I narrates. But she's interrupted by frantic classmates claiming that a monster has abducted their friends. I goes to confront Jumba about the creation of the Nyan. Unfortunately, he's already at work creating a teleportation gun that will, in theory, send its target to the dimension housing the other mythical beasts. The Nyan is now chasing kids at a playground and tries to attack Ai when she shows up, but Stitch saves her, though he somehow can't fight the Nyan because it's quote-unquote too big, even though we all know damn well he should be strong enough to do so. At this point, the Nyan notices a camera on the ground, which is dropped by one of the schoolboys as he ran away. Opening the camera and playing the footage, the Nyan is clearly entertained. The logical explanation for this is that the video depicts a stage scene of a child being attacked, and Bin Yan, being a child hunter, would enjoy that. However, the conclusion that I comes to is that the beast likes movies, which is an odd conclusion, because liking a random video doesn't necessarily mean that someone is a movie buff, but go off, I guess. Going off of her hunch, I pretends to be an agent scouting for a monster to act in a movie. And because the plot demands it, then Yan apparently does want to be a movie star. <sighs> How convenient that this practically newborn creature saw one video and is now completely obsessed with acting. This whole bit feels like an afterthought shoved in to make the rest of the episode follow a cohesive theme. So anyway, he's fooled into thinking he's being given a chance to star in a movie, and after being run through a couple of pointless action scenes, I tells him about the last part of the fake movie. You and Brad are going to be playing major heroes who save a group of captured children. Feeling heroic? But we need a background for the scene with some captured children. Got any ideas? Mm. Think! Come on! <laughs> Having finally tricked the Nyan into leading them to the stolen children, I and Stitch are brought to a cave in the mountains. Where did the monster get those jail bars? Who cares? Nothing makes sense anymore. The Nyan is directed to free his captain as abs part of the scene, only to quickly realize he's been duped. Jumma comes in the nick of time with his newly finished teleporter, and the Nyan is sent away. To wrap things up, Ai has now truly settled on the subject for her video, ending the episode on a bittersweet note. You know, almost everyone has lost someone they love, but most people never talk about it. So what I want to tell the world is something we really need to believe. If you lose someone you care about, you're not alone. Mother, I remember you. My thoughts on this episode? Meh. Nothing significant happens story-wise, so it's basically a filler. I wish they would have utilized more of the mythos of the Nyan, such as a version to loud noise, fire, and the color red. But they went with a the movie theme instead, and honestly, that could have been done better too. Y'all know the drill by now. Don't harass anyone who likes the show. And as always, take my salt with a grain of salt.